everyone, how's it going? So after my last video talking about how to choose a master's or postgraduate course and how to apply, today I thought I would make a video talking about how to write a successful personal statement. So currently I'm doing my master's at King's, but I applied to eight places in total just because I'm not really sure why, to be honest. I always knew I wanted to come to a London university anyway, but I applied to a whole bunch just in case. So I applied to eight, and out of the eight that I applied to, I got into seven. And the eighth one, which was Imperial, I will never know if I actually would have gotten a place or not, because it was four weeks after I had submitted my application, and I was just like, why haven't they got back to me? Surely they would have got back to me to say that at least your application wasn't successful. So I decided to email the admissions team, and they were like, well, we sent you an email to choose which strand of the course you wanted to be on, but uh, you didn't get a, we didn't get a response from you. And I was just like, excuse me, uh, what? Turns out the email that they had sent me hadn't received my inbox for some bizarre reason. And although the lady who was emailing me did sound very apologetic, it still, still meant that by the time she actually got in touch with me, all of the places were filled. So I don't know, maybe I would have gotten a rejection anyway, but it's a shame that I'll never get to find out. Anyway, all of that blabbering put aside, I've divided this video into two parts. So in the first part, I'm going to share with you a bunch of questions that you should ask yourself that are going to help you get started with the writing, because I know that starting is usually one of the hardest things to do. And as I go through some of these questions, I'll give you example answers, but to be perfectly honest, the answers are very specific to you, so there isn't a cookie cutter answer that I can give you. But the examples might help. Then in the second part of the video, what I'm going to do is give you a bunch of tips that will help you put all of the questions that I just gave you and that hopefully you have answers for. Um, I'll just give you tips on how you can put all of that together to create a coherent and hopefully successful personal statement. So I guess let's just get started. So firstly, the most important question to ask yourself is why do you want to study this course? It could be because you really enjoyed your course at undergraduate and you would like to develop further skills. Or maybe it's because you want to apply to a particular job and that job would require you to expand your knowledge in the particular field. Either way, give this question a long and hard think because this is one of the most important questions. Number two is why have you chosen this particular institute? Again, I can't really give you a specific answer because this is very much specific to you. But you could mention things along the lines of facilities or the fact that they are renowned for that particular field that you want to study. Or maybe even they are one of the only courses in the country that have a very particular structure of the course and that's what you're really drawn to. Number three, and I think this is a really good question to answer when you're writing this, is what sparked your interest in the field to begin with? So for me, when I was writing my personal statement, I said that my love for cancer research developed when I was doing cell biology and the cancer module in my undergraduate. And I think this is a nice thing to answer firstly yourself, but also to include in your personal statement, because it shows exactly where your interest first developed. And I think this is overall a better thing to include instead of saying, I have always been interested in history, or I have always been interested in biology. Because it might not necessarily be true, and I feel like the admissions people can see through that. The fourth question to answer is what experiences have you had within this particular field or if you don't have any hands-on experience, what studies or articles have you come across that have potentiated your interest in the area? Again, kind of like the last question, it's always nice to be able to show why you're interested. So if you do have any relevant experience, great, and if not, do your research and just maybe talk about a couple of things that have really captured your interest. So as an example, when I was doing my undergraduate study, I did a 10-week placement at the Northern Institute of Cancer Research, and that's what made me completely fall in love with doing research to begin with. Number five is what is your overall purpose for wanting to do this course? For example, you could say that you are really passionate about global warming and climate change and because of that reason you want to study geography, for example. Or you could mention, for example, how you recognise obesity is becoming such a massive problem and because of that reason you want to study nutrition to be able to help people make better lifestyle choices. 
obviously adjust this to your field of study but I think it's quite nice to give kind of like a bigger picture of why you want to do what you're applying for. Number six is discuss briefly what particular skills you think are required for this course and also use your previous experiences to try and demonstrate how you have obtained these skills. So for example, in my case, I could say that in order to do research, a key skill that is required is patience and resilience. And then I could go on to say that I have developed patience and resilience through doing multiple experiments and doing multiple repeats if any of those experiments don't work. Number seven is kind of similar to the last one, but not quite. And it is what techniques or specific methods you think are required for this course and give examples of how you have acquired them. So unlike the last one, where the skills could be things like resilience, patience, um, responsibility, confidence, um, reading skills, etc. This one's a little bit more technical. So again, using my own experiences as an example, I could say that in my undergraduate study, I have practiced Western blotting techniques and I have done quantitative PCR or I have done reverse transcription or just list a number of, you know, techniques that you have learned. Number eight is what will you learn and what will you obtain through doing this course? This is a really good way to show the admissions team, again, what your purpose is and how exactly this course is going to help you in all of the other areas that you want to improve on. And it also follows on to the very last tip, number nine, which is what are your future goals for your career if you have any specifically in mind and how does this course help you reach them? I think this is a really good thing to finish on because not only does it show that you have researched maybe something in the future and that you have something to work towards, but it also shows that you are taking the necessary steps, for example, by applying to this course, that are, that are going to help you get to those goals. So those were the nine questions and what I would recommend is, well, you can either watch this video all the way through or you can pause it here, go in and answer those questions and then come back for the second part. And also to make your life a whole lot easier, I have put all of those questions in the description below. So just copy and paste them into the Word document, give them all a quick answer and then I will see you soon. So now we can move on to a bunch of the tips that are going to help you put everything together. Tip number one is state your intention clearly right at the beginning. This is always a good idea because it gives you a strong start and an example of this could be I would like to study X at Y Institute because I am interested in expanding X skills or something along those lines. A lot of people fall into the trap of trying to make the beginning sentence really flowery and saying things like I have always had a passion in this field or for as long as I can remember I have been enthusiastic in X, Y and Z and that's all good and well if that is your style but personally I think it's always good to start with a very straightforward strong beginning sentence. Tip number two is try and organize the structure of your personal statement in the order of the questions that I gave you. And the way that the structure should look is almost like an hourglass. So you're starting at the beginning and talking generally about why you want to do this course and what interests you, and then narrowing in the middle to your very own ex um, specific experiences and talking about what skills you have, what previous experience you have, and then expanding it out again by talking about how you're interested in the field and what your future goals are and how you think this course is going to help you in the future. So I hope you, you know what I mean when I say kind of like a hourglass kind of structure. Number three is when you're talking about why you are choosing that particular institute, go ahead and throw in a couple of compliments in there. You can mention things like you want to study there because of their state-of-the-art facilities or that they are renowned for a specific department or that they were named number one in a particular area like technology or art or whatever. Try and avoid generic things like I would like to study at King's because it's a London Institute and I want to move to London because that is a little bit vague and if somebody reads that they think well you know there are like lots of other universities in London why not go to one of them instead. Number four is when you're talking about your experiences try and avoid making a list or just stating what you have done and instead say what you have gained out of doing those experiences. 
So for example, instead of saying, during my placement, I learned the Western blotting technique, you could say something like, during my placement, by practicing the Western blotting technique, I developed skills in X, Y, and Z. Or for example, you could say, instead of saying, I shadowed this person in this institute, you could say, by shadowing this person in this institute, I learned the importance of, and then mention the, some of the things that you found really important. Again, I know that some of these things do seem quite obvious, but putting them into practice is quite difficult, which is why I'm doing my best to try and emphasize them as much as I can. Number five is don't overuse the words passion, enthusiastic, interested, or words that again make your personal statement a little bit too flowery. As I said, this is a personal preference, but I think it seems a bit more professional when you have more of a logical structure as opposed to trying to make it, you know, very creative. Or not creative, you know, flowery, fluffy. I hope you know what I mean. Number six is try to avoid writing your personal statement in a way that makes you seem overly confident. This is really hard for me to give examples, but the whole reason you're applying to the course is because, you know, you're going to be a student after all, and you're going to be there to learn. So although it's really good to be able to demonstrate all of this experience that you have and to be able to show the skills that you have, try not to make it sound like you're too much of an expert because it can come across arrogant. And as I said, you are going to be a student. And last but not least, number seven, try to be as authentic and as original as you possibly can. You've got to remember that the people who take on these admissions read hundreds and hundreds of personal statements. So if you do pick up, you know, cliche things or um, things that are overused, they will be able to spot that immediately. And honestly, don't put too much pressure on yourself. As long as you qualify for the requirements and you have some of the experiences and you write a very genuine personal statement, you shouldn't have anything to worry about. So try not to overdo it. So sorry that this video is a little bit of a rambly one, but I hope that these points and some of these tips can help you guys out. When I was writing my personal statement last year or something like that, it took me maybe like three weeks or something just to be able to write my personal statement. And I know that something like this would have helped me out a lot. So I hope you guys find it useful. And if you did, guys, make sure to give this video a thumbs up because it would help me out a lot. And also, if you would like to support me, there will be links to my Patreon, Etsy, Instagram, and all of that kind of stuff, either on the page and below. So best of luck in writing, and until next time, guys, take care, and I'll see you later. Bye.